I'm going to take you way, way out on the frontier of knowledge with this topic. And as Dr. Racy has said it more than once, there's some things we don't know. And some of us, or some of our loved ones, we're out there where there isn't so much that's known yet. Those of us that have been called to go out there first need to tell the people that are coming behind us. I'll give you a little timeline about him. I first heard about Bicuspidary Valley, um, but it was in 1990 in April. And he was very sick, and uh, his valve was replaced. And got well, totally was fixed, fixed for life. This valve could go over 100 years, longer than a human lifespan mechanical valve. And then in 2001, um, an excellent echo technician discovered 5.2 centimeter ascending aortic aneurysm above that mechanical valve. So in May of 2001, after a lot of searching, we found Dr. Racy and he had his aneurysm ring. So he's getting a little bit more and more bionic, wasn't he? Mechanical valve, now he's got some Dacra in there. And again, three days he was out of the hospital. He wanted to get out on the second day, they wouldn't let him go home. That was a tremendous uh, positive experience. In November of 2005, he had a um, massive stroke on the right side of his head. Strands. We found them in January 2006, and in February 2006, the mechanical valve came out. So the question is, well, what caused this? Um, you know, I had no idea, but I know the physicians know, the heart and the brain. What's the heart going to do with those major vessels coming up by the heart? Where do you need to get that blood? You need to get up here. This is the control center. The brain is everything. When it's pumping, it's going to send, if any debris is around, anything's going on, it could easily go to the brain. And so, they're closely tied together. And many injuries to the brain originate in the heart. So if you have a mechanical valve, you've already been warned. You're on an anticoagulant, your brain, you could bleed. Or you could have a clot form that could go up to the brain. So that's what I thought. I, I actually probably thought it was a blood clot that was thrown, but in our local medical facility, they, they couldn't find any, any reason. Um, he had just hit his blood test the day before, perfectly in range. He'd been very stable. Now, there wasn't anything there that we could find. There was no bleeding. The CT scan in the ER confirmed there was no bleeding. And the echo showed this nice little mechanical valve opening and closing, wasn't sticking. There was no answer. And that's what really bothered me. Because every day I had to worry about, as he was fighting to recover in the rehab ward, is he going to have another stroke today? Because we have no idea why he had this happen to him. So through the month of December, I wondered about that. I was really afraid. I didn't think he could afford another one. So when he was released from rehab in January, he had a, uh, he had a TEE that day. And uh, they checked for so many things inside, I don't remember the list of things they told me that they were checking for. I don't remember them all. And they were all negative, but guess what? There was something. Little hair like threads were hanging off, floating in the bloodstream on the intake side of the valve, valvular strands. Well, I went home that night and I had something new to search for, valvular strands or threads. So I went into PubNet that night when we got home and I searched. And I found, and I was shocked at what I found because I found two papers right away, and when we got the full, there was, there was just a handful of papers, and there's not a lot out there. But um, a 76-year-old woman with a mechanical valve for 16 years, my husband had his 15 and a half. 
She was having some symptoms. They found strands in her. She didn't have a stroke. I'm ha so happy for her. And then there was a 46-year-old man, same mechanical valve as my husband, both of these people. He'd only had it about five years. And this poor man, the way it's written in the paper, he kept having these strokes. You know, it's easy to blame that the, it could be a small clot or something, that your INR is, is off. But in both of the, finally this man, finally they did a TEE on him, valvular strands. And both of them had their valves replaced. Now that's the medical literature, so I thought I found, I, I hit gold that night. Because at least now we know that strands, strands are on the scene. When they go looking for, why did they have a stroke? You know, they're kind of guilty because they're on the scene of the crime. Nobody was right there when it happened and saw those things break off and shower my husband's brain. But, the, you know, it's pretty strong circumstantial evidence. And these papers were convincing enough so that we could make a decision based on this to get that valve out of my husband. How do you decide to do something like this? He's just had a big stroke. What's going to happen to him? How's he going to come through this? When should we do it? And we're going to get a new valve in there, and then we're going to continue the recovery. Input from the neurologist, he uh, agreed that it could be done in February, so that's when it was done. It wasn't an easy surgery for Dr. Racy. The, um, his aortic root was a mass. It was an absolute mass, and it wasn't big enough for that bovine valve. So he put a pericardial patch in. He got rid of a lot of that old calcified mess and uh, took a little calcification that was depositing on his mitral valve. And guess what? You know he woke up because you saw him here yesterday. I'd just like to leave you with that thought this is something that, if you read the papers, the medical papers, they're going to say, this is a real dilemma when we find this what to do. Well, I'm just telling you what we did in our case. I'm very glad. But I love that TEE because it's the only test. He had every test. It's the only one that detects valvular strands. And there's a paper out of Holland. I have a cardiologist in Holland who's written beautifully about it. And in that paper, they talk about the strands and the TEE. And my goal is to get that paper out to patients and physicians everywhere so they can follow these valves and prevent strokes before they happen.